Check it out. The Declaration of Independence. It's one of the most basic doctrines of our nation. And as elementary school students, we are familiarized with the idea that all men are created equal and that they are endowed by the Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Though these self-evident truths seem rather straightforward, the demographic characterizes all men has had to evolve significantly over time. At first, all men only encompassed white property-owning males, but as time progressed, this group eventually grew to include African Americans, women, and numerous other minority groups that also often faced discrimination. Unfortunately, still in 2012, all citizens of the United States do not have equal protection under the law. As lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender Americans fight for marriage equality, they can look back at all the progress made in the field of LGBT rights and look toward total equality in the future. Homosexuality was not something recently invented in the 1960s counterculture movement. It has always existed in the human race. Notable rulers and intellectuals, from Alexander the Great to Julius Caesar to Plato, have all had historical reputations of involvement with the same sex. And as long as homosexuality has been around, so has discrimination against it. In ancient Europe, homosexual activity was considered criminal, and in the 1500s, Louis VIII passed the Buggery Act, making sodomy punishable by death. Fast forward a few hundred years, and homosexuality is still being condemned by prosecution and imprisonment. Thomas Jefferson, the founder of our nation, proposed the castration of gay men, and homosexual tendencies in women were considered nearly unthinkable. Though individuals still sought to hide their sexuality, by 1897, the gay and lesbian communities finally found their voice with the formation of the Scientific Humanitarian Committee in Berlin. By 1922, this committee had grown to 25 chapters, all rallying and campaigning for legal reform. Meanwhile in America, the Society for Human Rights was founded in Chicago as the first gay and lesbian rights organization in America. Unfortunately, with the rise of Hitler and World War II, progress was stifled and the government aimed to rid the military or any government-related profession of homosexuals. As a result, the struggle for equal rights was swept under the rug in favor of national issues. Following the war, the public was shocked by the publication of sexual behavior in the human male, which claimed that 4% of males were exclusively homosexual while 37% have had homosexual experiences. It was then in 1969 with the controversy of the Stonewall Riots when the movement for the LGBT rights finally came to the forefront. Though police raids of gay bars were not uncommon, this time, at the Stonewall Inn in Greenwich Village, the gay and lesbian communities fought back, growing to a force of 2,000 people strong. The anniversary of this event is now commemorated with the Gay Pride March in June. Progress for the LGBT community continued as homosexuality was removed from the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Psychological Disorders, and in 1980, the Democratic Party officially added non-discrimination of sexual orientation to their platform. As homosexuality became a more prominent topic in politics, Jerry DeGrick and Nancy Weschler became the first openly gay politicians. And in 1983, Jerry Studs became the first openly gay politician to be elected to Congress. Regardless, minimal progress was still made. In 2003, Texas laws against sodomy were enforced in the case of Lawrence versus Texas. In this case, two men were briefly jailed and fined for having private consensual sexual activity in their own home. However, when this case was brought to the Supreme Court, the law was invalidated and deemed unconstitutional. This negated the previous decision of Bowers versus Hardwick and legalized same-sex sexual activity all over America. In recent years, however, LGBT rights have made significant strides. In 2009, the Employment Non-Discrimination Act was modified to include LGBT workers, and in 2011, the Don't Ask, Don't Tell policy was officially repealed. An open statement by a service member that he or she is a homosexual will create a rebuttable presumption that he or she intends to engage in prohibited conduct. We are not a nation that says, don't ask, don't tell. We are a nation that says, out of many, we are one. Unfortunately, as more individuals gain the courage to openly embrace their sexual orientation, they are also left more susceptible to hate crimes and homophobia. In recent years, gay teen suicides have increased at a horrifying rate. Hate and misunderstanding have caused gay youths as young as 13 to commit suicide as a result of extreme bullying. These unfortunate events have sparked the foundation of the Trevor Project, No Hate, and It Gets Better campaign, all dedicated to inspire hope and self-acceptance for LGBT youth. Now in the year 2012, the current battle for gay and lesbian rights is a struggle toward total marriage equality. In 1996, President Bill Clinton passed the Defense of Marriage Act, which defines marriage as only the union of one man and one woman, and prevents the federal government from acknowledging same-sex partnerships. 
Since then, several states, beginning with Vermont in the year 2000, have adapted civil unions to allow gays and lesbians to become legal partners. Though this truly does not have the same legal provisions as a marriage, many states consider it a separate but equal alternative. Separate but equal? Does that sound familiar? Well, it should. In the 1896 case of Plessy v. Ferguson, the United States Supreme Court deemed African American and Caucasian separate but equal facilities were entirely constitutional. As this ruling was overturned in the decision of Brown v. Board of Education, why does our country still think that separate but equal anything is a good alternative to providing equal rights? Just as separate facilities were not equal, neither are marriages and civil unions. Civil unions are not recognized in the eyes of the federal government, and if a couple wanted to dissolve the civil union, they could only do so in certain states. Also, as we fill out forms in our everyday lives, partners in a civil union do not fit into the category of married, single, widowed, or divorced. As a result, we're treating members of civil unions like second-class citizens. Additionally, marriages entitle couples to over 1,000 legal federal rights. For gay couples to receive these same protections, they must go through a costly legal process. However, marriage licenses can be obtained for less than $100. Marriage is a universal concept and the terms husband and wife can be understood by all. In 2003, the ruling of Goodridge versus the Department of Public Health finally legalized gay marriages in the state of Massachusetts. But since then, only five states have legalized gay marriage. Then, in 2008, California Prop 8 to ban gay marriages sparked national controversy and resulted in the courtroom case that inspired 8, a play based on the actual court transcripts. With all due respect to Mr. Cooper, does not cut it. It does not cut it when you're taking away the constitutional rights, basic human rights and human dignity from a large group of individuals. You cannot say after the fact, we are going to take away the constitutional right to liberty, privacy, association, and sexual intimacy that we already tell you you have. That is not acceptable, and it's not acceptable under our Constitution, and Mr. Blankenhorn is absolutely right. The day we end that, we will be more American. Thank you. In recent news, the North Carolina has officially banned gay marriages. President Obama has publicly announced his support of them. It is important for me to go ahead and affirm that uh, I think same-sex couples should be able to get married. After all, isn't choosing whom to love and having the right to be legally wed to him or her fit into the category of unalienable rights? Why should members of the LGBT community not be protected under every federal law that protects straight citizens? That's called equality, and it has always been the basis of our nation. Though we've come a long way from ignoring the homosexual tendencies in our species, we still have a ways to go before we can reach a point of total acceptance and where homophobia has as much of a negative connotation as racism. Fortunately, much like progress in the past, total equality and acceptance is only a small ways away. And always remember that it does get better. It'll be great. I promise it gets so much better. But what I can say with great confidence is it does get better. Things will get easier. People's minds will change. And you can change. You should be alive to see it. I just like one day I want like my son to come home from school and be like, I found this guy and I love him. And I'm gonna be like, yes, you do, and that's okay. Like, you know.